found it? No. <sighs> we'll ask someone. That he wouldn't talk. I don't know why I'm doing this anyway. What would you know about sea fishing? Nothing. Sounds boring. Look, if you want, we'll find you a bit of room on the back seat. <laughs> but you might lose your virtue. Oh, promises, promises. That's all I get around here, isn't it? Yeah, Viv, Viv. Yeah. Yeah, now, here's the man you want to see. Yeah, right. Carver, yeah, he'll, he'll put some overtime on your card. He's a time and a half, man. That's no, Jim, Jim. Thanks a lot, Sarge. Taff. Don't forget your water wings, Sarge. <laughs> you cheeky bugger. Should have gone by now. I've uh, got a few late ones as usual. The bait hasn't turned up. As long as we get to Margate by about 12, we'll be all right. I know you get away with it. You knew you'd left the station with hardly any staff. Oh, don't worry. You can make your own tea for one day. But don't forget, warm the pot first. That's the secret. I'll get my own back. Oh, and by the way, uh, you can tell Roach. I think he looks like something out of Jerry Cottles. And uh, <laughs> you don't look so clever either. Oh, very funny, Roy. Very funny. Excuse me. Which one's Montgomery House? Somebody's nicked all the signs off the walls. Yeah, I didn't nick anything round here, mate. It's the next block along. Uh, what number do you want? Uh, eight. Yeah, it's the first floor. Cheers, mate. Oh, Inspector Galloway's fan club, is it? <laughs> Fat chance. Boys in pen more likely, Tom. Anyway, what's going on here this morning? Having a beano to South End or something? Yeah, Margate. Station's annual fishing trip. I had a boat, more fool left. Eh? Oh, that can keep that. You ever been out on one of those boats when it's rough? It's a bit... Oh, I can tell you. I think that's what they're counting on. Come on, Ridge. Stop chatting. Help load some of those crates of beer on the back of that coat. Sorry, sir. You see what I mean? Oh, that's different. That's what I call fishing. Look at the seat on your next trip, eh? See you. See you, George. Morning, Tom. Um, you, when are you off? Round ten. Please. No one's rung up about dropping off some bait, have they? No. no. Heard anything from uh, Dashwood or Yorkie Smith? Uh, they've gone to nick a fella for a county force, uh, non-appearance in court or something. Yeah, I know. Poacher. You know, we haven't poached in the East End. Yeah, the only poachers I know are uniform sergeants who nick CID staff. How do you con Dashwood into going out to a job like that? Charm. Charm? No, we well, we'll have a DR get his own back. Don't worry about that. He'll have your head. Before this bird's had my body. Oh, not that cranky woman again. I want you to lose your temper, yell and swear, and keep up a steady rhythm. <laughs> oh, it's time I got one of those. Let's have a look. No, 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 no. no. P.S. Is it true what they say about policemen with big noses? Come on, let's have a look. Oh, Come on, Bob. Now, be fair. Don't be silly, Mr. Archer. Open the door. Russell Archer. It is Russell Archer, isn't it? What do you want me for? I haven't done anything. There's a W out on you, Archer. We didn't turn up at court, did we? Naughty boy. I wasn't feeling very well. That's no excuse. But look, they won't put me inside for that, eh? No, I mean, not poaching. Ooh, it's a topping offence out in the sticks. Nicking the squire's pheasants. We'll put in a good word for you. Oh, yeah. Well, look, let, let me get dressed, eh? Yeah. Come on, open the door. Yep. Hello, Terry. How are you doing? I'm oh, sorry. I can't do anything today. Look. I'm understaffed. Yeah. It... Hang on a minute. Hey, can you answer that for me, my son? Yeah, look. See, the uniform know this. have nicked my DC. Yes, Dashwood. And I'm up to my eyeballs. It's for you. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. And. Um... Get in there with him, Yorkie. Well, let him get his trousers on first. Go on. Come on now, Mr. Archer. Don't be shy. You must have got your trousers on by now. 
Mr. Archer! In. He's bloody gone! Oh, God, I told you to get in here. Archer! Loving memory. Why didn't you dump it somewhere, anywhere? I couldn't. The lady gave it to me. And it on her front doorstep. What could I do but bring it in? So you were in dead lumber there, Sarge? Back out on the streets. Go on. Yes, sir. Oh, what am I going to do with a bloody thing? No name on it, nothing. I think it's a CID job, myself. No chance. I'm in enough trouble as it is with this Wally. Good night, lads. Yeah. Yeah. Sarge, just the man. There's a burglary gone down in the book. Uh, one for the CID. And man and Julie Taffy, right? Oh, yeah, but knowing how keen you are, Sarge, I thought you might just like to sort of pop out and do this one before going off on your marine pub crawl. Fishing trip, Edwards. Oh. Mark it down to Dashwood. He's got nothing to do. Oh. Should have known better, Mike. Probably this trick in the book. It was my fault, sir. It was both your faults, and if it comes that you'd both be up before the governor. He was on the first floor. Simple, yeah. mundane arrest. And you two have to cock it up. He went, well, down that wall like a... he went down that wall like a squirrel, sir. Let me go out again, and I can get him. You've got too many other things on today. Well, just half an hour. No. Can... It wasn't our job from the start. It wasn't for this bloody fishing trip. We wouldn't got involved at all. Go on, answer it. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't Mike's fault, sir. You, my son, will be up very early yep. tomorrow morning with some other wooden top off your relief. Yep. And you'll drag Archer out of bed yep. if he's still there. Trousers yep. or no trousers, yes? Sir. Sir. Attempted armed robbery, sawn off shotgun job. Tell the officer all about it, and I'll see you later on the station, all right? Well, again? Every word, please. All right. Well, it was like this. I came out of that factory gates over there. Look to me right, not a dicky bird. Look to me left, just about to pull out when this geezer sticks a shotgun under me hooter. It's only that idiot we went, we went to nick this morning. It's a bit extreme for a poacher, isn't it? Shooting at a fleeing milk float. The description's bang on. You heard what that bloke said, Gov. If it is Archer, where'd he get the weapon from? There was no sign of any gun when we went to nick him. He must have had it in the bedroom and then stuck it under his jacket when he made a run for it. Under his jacket? What am I going to do with you, Dashes? I just didn't think he had it in him, Gov. Not to perform with a gun like that. Change your character, that's what you get. A bloke like Archer grows in stature of a shooter. And I've got him running all over this manor, thanks to you and that Yorkshire twit. Have they left that fishing trip yet? No, not until about ten. Let's get on the air, then. I'm afraid we're going to have to ruin their day, the fishermen of England. That'd probably come with screwing. They didn't know what they'd nicked, and when they did realise it, they just dumped on the nearest doorstep. Mm, wish I could get rid of it that easy. Bob! Between the creeps. I'm going up the pub for a while out of the way. You know Galloway, if he spots me hanging about here, yeah. he'll have me doing some of the outstanding cars I've got upstairs. Drink before opening time? That's against that all side approach. Disciplinary events. You know what you can do about that, don't you? Yeah, it's not a bad idea, that, Ted. I'll tell you what, I'll join you in a minute. I just want to make a quick phone call. Yes. Oh, thank God. So much yes, to do some work. Sergeant Roach. What? <gasps> DI's on the line. I'm not here. Thank you very much. You said you wanted to get rid of it, Sarge. Right. 
I'll get Ackland to try and register him. Get some correspondence on the man. I want to find someone who knows him or has dealt with him. Right, and I'll get down the DHS then. Good. I'll try medical and mental. You never know. He might be on own leave from some loony bin. Probably thinks he's wired up. Whoever he thinks he is, let's get him before he does any more damage. Hollis? Sir? See Sergeant Roach? Oh, he's still about somewhere, sir. Find him, where? Go on, right? If I, uh, if I take the pool car. Yeah. What have you been up to then? Oh, nothing. What's this? Had an accident? No, I went in the front office and I got ordered to clean up somebody else's mess. And it's supposed to be me day off. Oh. That's my lot for today. That's your lot for today? I do like a lady who knows when she's had enough. I never sussed you as a speeder, Mr. Cryer. Never in a month of Sunday. You call a 20 pence win Yankee, tax pay gambling. Uh, ain't your style, Sunday? Must be the first bit I've had in about three months. Well, they all say. See you tomorrow. Yeah, oh, there you go, love. Right, you're going to take this one, but you're going to redecorate the shop. You're the sort of lucky punter that can have it all here. How can I show my face down a club? Can you imagine? Sergeant Bob Cryer, local old bill, scoops a Yankee. Ain't on, is it? No, me. That'll be the day. What are you? Pickle with a pen? <laughs> You have got a lot of plonkers here. Remember, if it weren't for people like me, you'll keep, you'd go skint. <laughs> you eat! Oh, fishing. Yeah, well, don't look so surprised, Sadie. You know, every man's got to have a hobby. Most men have got more than one, if you know what I mean. Got to relax, babes. You know, you can't keep banging your head against the wall. It wasn't eggs I was thinking of. You dirty. That's the trouble with you women. You know, you've got one-track minds. Are you sure you won't have one? Trouble. What? Hey, drink. I'm the governor wants you. I'm not here. All right, Sarge, but don't say I didn't tell you. What was it a break there? Oh, well. Good luck. You know as well as I do, I can't give you that kind of information. Look, Mrs. O'Hara. We're having a spot of bother with our trip at the moment. Otherwise, I wouldn't be asking. There could be a serious crime involved. Could be. Or is. He's running around the manor with a shotgun. Look, all I'm really asking is, have you got another address for him? The Montgomery House is what appears on our records. Has he got a, a mother or a sister? Any sort of relative that he might have gone running to? So now you're asking for somebody else's address? All I'm asking is will you help me catch a dangerous nutter? I can't hand out that sort of information willy-nilly. Especially not about third parties. Even if I had any. OK, let's forget about third parties. Tell me what he's doing in temporary housing. Well, that's something you have to take up with the housing department. Oh. We have nothing to do with housing or rehousing. It's not our responsibility. Then let's talk about what is. Now, you're involved with Archer over welfare benefits. I don't recall having said so. You want me to make formal application? I'd be a lot happier if you would. I'm trying to save time. I'll bend the system. Mrs. O'Hara, the man is out there running wild. We don't know where, and we'd like some help. Anything. Just some clue or other. Preferably before someone gets hurt. All right. The archers first appeared in the borough a year ago. They moved into a derelict caravan on a council tip. Social services visited. They found archers scavenging for food. You can imagine the environment. Rats, filth, no water. Eventually, housing forcibly evicted them into Montgomery House. And where do you come into it? I visited the flat. Social services were recommending additional benefits. Apart from unemployment and supplementary benefit, you mean? This is not private information. I'm just trying to help, love. Thank you. I do the same for you sometimes. I'm cancelling your day off. Oh, come oh. off it! Why? What's the panic? Emergency. I want all your lads on standby. Oh, you can't do that. 
The coach is outside, ready to go. I'm not arguing. I need your land. Sam, well, you can get extra manpower from the vision. I could. All you've got to do is pick up the phone. It's down to us, our mistake. Excuse me, oh, sir. Oh, come on. Now, you know this coach ship has been booked for months. Honestly, God, it has. Sir, there's been another armed robbery. Now do you want to argue? Oh. Man, there are a lot of other calls I could be going to. Yeah, you ought to go to the hospital, Lucky. I don't want to go down the hospital, all right? We're calling you stumpy if something doesn't have a look I'm at that. I'm not going down the hospital, that's final. He don't want to know. He doesn't want to know, he doesn't want to know. Well, thanks anyway. That's down to him. You ought to see your doctor. Get some of those pellets taken out before it goes septic. I'll get my upper pen knife like your geezer back there. I'll whack some disinfectant on it, be all right. Tell me more about the man with the shotgun. Tell me exactly what he said. Well, that's it. I mean, he didn't say nothing. He walked in, he stuck the shooter under the glass there. I thought, hello, I ain't gonna mess about with this geezer. He had that look in his eyes, Mr. Galloway. What look? You must have seen it. Guy was in the corner when you walked out of the shop. Sergeant cried over things on his mind. Didn't you, Sergeant Cry? Oh, I remember someone else being in the shop. Against the wall, over there. No, I didn't see his face, though. Well, if you had, you'd have known. You've got a loony on your hands here, gents. Bleeding loony. Go on, what happened then? Well, I said, OK, so you want some dough? And I put my hands out to reach for the till, like this. And he's gone, bush, squeeze the trigger. He never said a word to you. This geezer does his talking with a shotgun. I tell you, when I got up off the floor, seen he'd scarf, but I could have said a prayer, Mr Galloway. Honest, straight up. Do us a favour, Rookie. Give us a couple of minutes, all right? Yeah, all right. I can do it with a mean tea towel anyway. That's all. What did you find out? The man's a loner. Diddy Coy background. Used to be a caravan dwelling roadside scrap metal dealer, if you want the full title. Who's telling this, you or me? Oh, this is so. Sorry, sir. Socially inadequate, can't adapt. Is that all you got? Well, nobody knows him personally. Well, the fighter's still got some gypsy in him. He'll head for the hills when he's ready. Very likely, Ted. What he does in between worries me, Mike. Circulate him over the air again, in case someone's missed the message. Already done. Do it again. I'm going back to the Nick, Bob. Stay here with Ted. If I'll just spot I want some experience on it. What experience? Well, you know, poaching and fishing don't together. Very good. It, yeah. Yeah, it'll probably be quicker, Mrs. Roberts, if you brought it into the station personally. Yeah. Sarah Oscar, 600, are you seeing me, other? Yeah, can you hold on a minute, Mrs. Roberts? Loud and clear, Jim, over. As soon as he walked into the shop, oh, I knew he was up the nose. Now, listen, Jim, I'll just see the Did he have a gun? Go over. No. Was he alone? Yes, he yes. was about to yeah. hold up a yeah. shop and got frightened away. Over. And you didn't see a gun? Ah, well, he has something under his coat. She I said, exactly what do you want? And then some more people come into the shop. Oh. Do you know where we are, sir? Is that everybody crowded around him. He must have got scared because she pushed his way out the back and had it away on his toes. Uh, the location, sir? Oh, Dickinson Parade, number 24. It's 24 Dickinson Parade, over. 24 Dickinson Parade. I'll send an area car out there. I'll get hold of the away. And tell Carver to be careful. I don't want any heroes. Yes, Jim, I read you. R5. Please wait. Over. Nine, uh... I'm sorry, Jim. I can't read. I'm inside the Please wait. Over. Any cars in the vicinity, Dickinson Parade. Sierra Oscar, over. Hold it, Jim. Just come outside. 24, Dickinson Parade. Over. Robin! Oh. You right, oh, I'm all right, just go get the basket. Go, ambulance, move. Oh. Get after him. Go to 24, 24 Dickinson Parade. To Can I help you, sir? I've uh, lost my wife, officer. Lost her, sir? Mary Louise Milner. That's your wife's name, is it, sir? Yes. Mary Louise M I L N E R, sir? Yes. Uh, could you hold on a minute, sir? I'll come back if you uh, It's all right, sir. Just hang on. Uh, Sunhill Police, is Inspector Galloway still there? No. Um, Sergeant Roach? Yeah, he'll do. If you would. You say you've lost her, sir? 20 years ago. Next week. 
Ted, Archer's been sighted. I'll leave it out, will you? Can't you see him on the phone? You're standing in my scene of crime, treading over what might be vital clues. Yeah, go on. Dickinson Parade. Yeah, OK, we're on our way. We're in business? We're in business. Come on. I'll give you a hand if you like. Ah, uh -huh. Come on, Dashes. Please yourself. Uh, sorry about that. Do you mind starting again? Yes. I've uh, come about my wife. She died 20 years ago. I'm very sorry about that, sir. Uh, what can I do for you? I've... I've come at a bad time, haven't I? Oh, it's all right. You carry on. I'm... 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 Ernest Milner, by the way. Yeah. How can I help you, Mr Milner? Someone's... taken her ashes. Her what, sir? Her... ashes. Where? God, there's some bloody idiots about, eh? Now, which direction, over? Towards, I think it's Markson. Yes. Come on, come Markson on! Markson Avenue. Take a right here, Ted. No, it's the next no, one. come on, trust me, right here. Oh, all right. Watch it, Ted. Well, it wasn't my fault. He was on the wrong bloody Stop. lane. Bloody Stop. Stop. Stop, Ted, hey, what's Ted, that? there. Here. All units to the vicinity of Convair Place. Convair Place, over. <laughs> Inspector Galloway from Sierra Oscar 5, do you read me? Come on, kids, come on. Come on, come on. Up there. He's armed. Come okay, come on. Put the gun down. Let her go. Come on. It's okay. Take it easy. Take it easy. Last. June, I've been trying to get Inspector Galloway. He should be on his way to the Nick by now. Tell him we have a hostage situation. Also, tell Sergeant Penny I want increased manpower. Over? Yes, Sarge, leave it with me. Yeah. Liv, here, take over for a moment, will you? I'll leave that, sure, Jesus. Turns Jesus. Up. Sarge. We'll, we'll let you know. Thank you. Yes. Mike, right, over. Listen, he's in this end flat here. Oh, nice! Son, we should have more help here in about 15 minutes. Yeah, listen, Mike, get those uniformed officers to block the exit. I don't yeah, want anybody right. going in or out. Not in front of the window. Go around the back of the houses. And I'll, I'll get a right. cordon put up around here, Listen, all right? I don't want anyone in front of that window. I want Archer to be completely isolated. There are all elderly people in that building, Ted. I think we should evacuate it before we do anything else. And these houses over here as well, yeah? Yeah, well, I'll leave that to you, all right? Yeah, OK, I'll get a car from it. Jimmy! Arch? Oh, and listen, Bob. What about Frank? Oh, I don't know. They take him to the hospital. Look, look. If you nicked him, you must know something. What inquiries did you make? <sighs> we'll find the papers then. Look, hang on a minute, for just hang on. Um, ex ex yeah. excuse me. Could you answer that phone for us? That one there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers, Ta. Hello? Look, I'm right in the middle of taking a statement. No, no, to phone in there. No, 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 no. When you find him, no. call me back straight away. Hey? Says he's the chief it's superintendent no or something. I can't do better than that. I have to talk to your governor. Hello, yeah. WPC Ackland. Thank you. No, sir, no, you've got the right extension. It's nothing to worry about, love. Just a little bit of excitement. We're just going to move you into the day room. That's all right. Ted? Ted? Mike, what's been done? Everything possible, Gov. Ted's been running the show. He's doing all right. Very nice. You heard anything about Frank? He's going to be OK. Good. You know he's taken a hostage? Go on. Mrs Knowles, Mrs Sissy Knowles, who's 70-odd. According to the women I've just been talking to, she's a very timid lady. You know, she lives on her own. She gets frightened very easily. Apparently, she got mugged a couple of months ago. Poor old dear. 
What about the kids? Well, we're taking care of them. Would you believe that the parents are all on a day trip to Boulogne? Perhaps it's better out the way. Thanks, mate. You're still far. Uh, that's the apartment over there. Ground floor and on the left there. Uh, see, now the windows all face this way, so he's blind on the other side. Found an observation point yet? No, that was my next move. What about the house up there? Have you covered the back yet? Mike? Yeah, yes. Has he made any demands yet? Anything? No, nothing. It's dead quiet in there. Not literally, I hope. Yeah. Now, the chief suit was on his way, so let, let's get things moving. Mike, ring Sergeant Penny, get some shooters sent out here. What about some marksmen from the yard? Leave that to me. I want to play it as low-key for as long as possible. And, and don't... Also, and don't put it over the air, eh? Use the telephone on the corner. Also, I want someone from C7 sent down here urgent. Well, how much shall I tell him? For the time being, just say I want a telephone link up with the apartment. And when our archer's ready to speak, it'll be to us or nobody. You got it, my son? Yeah. See you back here. Right. Now, Ted, I've got a fire thanks. But that's the man you want to talk to over there. If you tell him, the man in the dark jacket. Hollis, I want an ambulance. He's found us. Are you the warden? Yeah. I'm sorry to bother you, sir. We have an emergency. There's a man with a gun holding one of your neighbours hostage. I was wondering where all the fuss was about. Who's he got? It's a Mrs. Knoll, sir. Well, it's a bee's not a woman over there. Well, we're moving everyone out for safety reasons. It's not me or not. Sir? Excuse me, sir. I'll check my records if you like, but I'm sure Mrs. Knowles isn't under the doctor. She's certainly not visited by the day nurse. What about relations, other than the daughter and the son-in-law? Well, I can't tell you that offhand. I'll get me a little book. I want that phone number now, Mr. Rickman, as quick as possible, please. Yes. Yeah. It's all right, Roy. We've got it. Any movement there? Nothing. You say you've got that number? Yeah. What do you reckon? Give it a try. Yeah, why not? Now, if it goes on for some time, these so old people will you. require temporary accommodation. Yes. yes. Don't argue with them. Tell them. Come on, tell them. Right, sir. Yes. Yeah. Sir, yeah. it's the press bureau. They've had some calls about PC Frank being shot. They want to know if there's a connection with the siege. Well, stall them until we've got some more information. Sir, hello? Well, yes, of course. It is. Yes. Uh, they want to know if you're on scene, sir. Shortly. Tell them I'll right, speak well, to them at the earliest opportunity after I've called them right. at the hospital. Okay, sir. thanks. And don't tell them any more than that. We're going to get this extra manpower. It'll be here. Don't worry. Ted, you got the house fixed up yet? Yep. They got a phone? Yep. Great, let's go. Don't forget to follow the van, Miles, sir. Don't dilly-dally on the way, Constable. There you are. Thank you. Would you like some biscuits? No, thank you. Could you leave us now, love? Please. We've never had anything like this here before. Thank you, Mrs. Baker. It's ringing. Mr. Archer? This is detect... I think we'll have to try something else. Frank was lucky only catching the edge of fire. If it had been a bit lower, he might have lost his John Thomas. I <laughs> trust you to think of that. Galloway sees me. I'm sure to get the blame for all this lot. Use you as cannon fodder, Yorkie. Listen, my son, stick your head through this letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> Archer. Can you hear me? Archer, is Mrs. Knowles all right? Say one, I'll kill you. Can I come in and talk to you? No! Then let me come in and talk to Mrs. Knowles. There's no harm in that. Go away and leave me alone! 
Listen, Russell. Put the phone back on the hook. You're going to have to talk to somebody sometime. Do you hear me? Bloody hell! I don't think he wants to talk to you, Gov. Listen to that lot. Need a bloody chainsaw to get through that way now. It's up there, sir. Right, thank you. Let's have you, darling. Please. Please. Well? Request from Sergeant Cryer. If this siege business isn't wrapped up by tonight, would you stay on and do some sandwiches for the troops? Of course I will. Thanks, love. Um, what about Paul Robin Frank? Any news? We don't know yet. C7. Ah, oh, good. About time. Right, what's the position? This is D.I. Galloway. He's set up most of what you can see. He's also tried to contact the man Archer once. The warden's drawn this up. Chairs, table, television set. Do we know where the phone is? Yes, it's on the wall here. It's got a connection to the skirting board. Now, what's this at the back, sir? Ah, oh, window. That's handy. Yes? It's a nice advantage if you can get Archer on the phone. Then we know exactly where he is if we have to rush the place. Yes, well, I hope it doesn't come to that. I've got Inspector Galloway and his men standing by in case. Uh, sorry. Just to tell you, I looked at my book. Mrs. Knowles is not under the doctor. And her nephew lives not far away, so I took the liberty of ringing it. Is that all right? Thank you, Mr. Hickman. If you could leave us now, please. please. Certainly. You know where I am if you require anything. Right. Thanks, mate. I'll, um... Thanks. Yes, thank you, Mr. Hickman. Very kind of you. Try and be more careful, Roach, when there are members of the public about. Any Sorry, sir. Yeah, There's no. still one down there. It's that ground floor one on the extreme left. Thank you, sir. Have you been drinking, Roach? Or drinking, sir? Me? No, sir. No. Sir, if I fix the phone, so no matter what he does, he gets us. Will that do for now? Yes, we've got to make contact with him, certainly. All right, sir. Let's see what we can do for you. Bet she it's only worms. She do. Oh, she just don't go around biting your bum if it's only worms. Give me some stick gun if you ever had it. When? Oh, it's I'll terrible. never shop at that supermarket Wheels on again. wheels, officer. Oh, you can't come through here, madam. I've got ten elderly people to feed. If they don't get their dinner, they'll kill me. And if I let you through, my detective inspector will kill me, madam. Mr. Archer, Chief Superintendent Brownlow. Don't put the phone down, Mr. Archer. I'd like to sort this business out without anybody getting hurt. I don't want anyone to get shot. How's Mrs. Knowles? All right, all right. All right, Mr. Archer. Whatever you wish. Look, if there's anything you need, cigarettes, food or anything, or if you just want to talk to somebody, just pick up the phone, all right? Do you understand that? Early days. How long are we going to give him? I'll call again in five minutes. Then every two minutes, it's imperative that we get a dialogue going. All right, you two, out of it. What's happening, sir? Do we Nothing. Know? Uh, do you mind if we stay, Sergeant? I've not seen anything like this before. Nothing's going to happen. Come on, out of it. Take a break. We'll there's too many of us here already. Sarge. Right, what do you want me to do? Well, heads down, make a dash for the other side of the door, and then try and find some cover. Try and find... Where am I going to find cover across there? There's nothing! What do you want to do? Draw straws? I intend to keep this situation as low-key as possible. 
I don't want those guns drawn, Roy, unless it's absolutely necessary. I hope you've instructed Roach and Dasher to that effect. Particularly Roach. Yes, Mr. Archer? Sergeant Cryer, just hold on a minute. He wants to speak to you, Bob. Me? I don't know Archer. Why does he want to talk to me? Oh, don't worry about that. Get on the phone. Come on, speak to him. Sergeant Cryer. You come to the door alone. I'll speak to you. No, no. Uh, will you say that again, Mr. Archer? You want me to come to the door alone? Is that right? Mr. Archer? Look, when the door opens, give us a sign, scratch your nose or something. You heard what the chief super said, low key. That's the way it's going to be. We might not get another chance, Bob. No, I'm going to do this one my way. I don't want any interference from anybody. Let you cock it up. And if I do talk my way in, I don't want you coming through the window on the end of a bit of rope or anything stupid like that. Your funeral, pal. Yeah? Well, just don't let Tom Penny get hold of my ashes. <laughs> What's happening now? Archer's ready to chat, we think. What you waiting for, Bob? Sing it in. Good luck. Mr. This Russell. Where's the lady? Come on, get it. Can I put my hands down there? Don't you try nothing clever. All right, love. All right, sit down. And you. The line's dead. He's probably cut you off. <sighs> yep. What's happening? We've lost contact. Then I think we ought to make arrangements to hit the place. Sergeant Cryer has the ideal temperament for dealing with a situation like this. I'm banking on him coming up trumps. Why don't you give yourself up, Russell? It's the easiest way out. Look, I don't want to see anyone else hurt. Why don't you give yourself up now while you've got a chance? Look, I can't promise you anything. You can't promise me nothing! I'm still alive because I've got you too! You're cornered, Russell. Can't you see that? I'm not going anywhere. Yeah, well, you wait till tonight when it's dark and your mate's outside. Then I'll find out who's cornered. Switch the telly on, Russell. Don't take my word for it. See for yourself. 
Go on, the news will be on soon. See what you're up against. Switch it on. Done! Yeah, the hospital took the pellet out and a local anaesthetic. And then some clever sod comes along and nicks the urn, would you believe? How come he got away with it? Did you, did you well, it's just too far away to do any serious well, I was damage. Going to, and then this archer business blew up. Yeah, the doctor said he was so, very lucky. So he's coming on yeah, if it had been a pistol, tonight. it would have been a different story. Oh, thanks. Sir. Yeah, okay, see ya. Sarge! Hey, look, uh, now look, what about deployment of troops down at the scene? Do they want me to relieve anybody with some of mine? Sarge, when am I going to be relieved? I've felt that polish. No, stay on standby. That's the chief super's orders. So I do nothing? No, for the time being. Oh. Sarge, I really am dying to go to the toilet. Can't someone relieve me? No! Oh, God. I don't think we can leave it much longer, sir. We must do something. There have been no further shots. Look. He could have a knife at both their throats. They could both be dead by now. I'm going to give it another ten minutes. Look, I've got some other equipment in the car, sir. Could help us listen in on what's going on. It would take a little while to set up that. So, why don't let me have another go at the letterbox? At least we'll know if he's got some more ammunition left. Yeah, it's all right. Right. Uh, Roy, nothing else. Nothing smart, all right? Sorry. And Roy, be careful. Oh, so you feel bad? Why they come out like men? There you are, Russell. Montelli, in the headlines. He shot a policeman. No, it'll be all right, love. Don't worry. That's right, Russell. That's me, isn't it? You shut up! Now, that's what you're up against, Russell. Got no chance. You sit down! Behind me, a sadly all too familiar scene. Police marksman, a waiting crowd, an anxious body of police officers. <laughs> What's that? There was a crash. It sounded like glass. I've got to do something. We can't go on like this. That seems hell of a time. Look, I'm going to have another go at the broom handle, see if I can get some response. Hang on a minute, Gov. There was a Meals on Wheels van tried to get through that cordon earlier. I've held it there. What do you think? <laughs> You're right, love. Sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> There's a stupid thing they do. They don't crash in here, cop, and you'll be the first one to guess it. I come in here to help you. You carry on talking like that, chummy, and I'm going to ditch you fast. What are you talking about? You ain't got me, I got you. Don't be stupid. Do you think for one minute they're going to let you walk out of here without me? I'm your passport, Russell Arch, and you better believe it. <laughs> Go on. Go on, do it. You're getting on my nerves, come on! You're panicking? Huh? Go on. You know what it's about. You've seen animals panicking often enough, haven't you, hey? What do you know about it, hey? Hey? You've been hunted, have you? Hey? Have you? You know it's like to be moved on, hey? Again and again. You can get away from me, you dirty bastard. You've got to fix the dress. Move on, you bloody tinker. Nobody's moving you on. You said I wanted to live there, eh? I didn't want to live there. You should have talked to somebody. Who? Who? Hey, who's going to talk the likes of me, eh? I think you better talk to me, Russell. Come on now, before it's too late. <laughs> eh? <laughs> What, what will they, they do to me if, if I give myself up? One kid, you, Russell. I have to go out before the call. <laughs> yeah, they, they put me inside, wouldn't they? I, 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 I couldn't stand that. I, I'll kill myself first. Eh? No, it doesn't have to be that way. Give yourself up now. Be in your favour. 
Let me see that. We haven't been in trouble before, apart from the poaching. No record of violence. I'd speak up for you. About you, sissy. Yeah. Some of your uniform lads are letting a van through the cordon. The meals on wheels, lady. She's late. What do you expect when all this going on? <laughs> come, on, come on, Russell. Give me the gun. Come on. Jacqueline, something must have happened. It's a trick! You lied to me! Go. Russell, hand me the gun. Quickly!